Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and today we're going to look at the PC version of Watch Dogs. I like to play a game for a few hours and reflect on what I thought to see if it's worth investing more time into it. So this video is just that. Now, once upon a time, a great man once said I hate to say it, but maybe it's time for the inevitable game entirely about future Desmond. This game kind of feels like that, but being from Ubisoft, I guess that's kind of understandable. The best way to describe Watch Dogs is that it's like a mix of Grand Theft Auto and Assassin's Creed. There's a lot of driving between missions in this huge open sandbox city, rather like Grand Theft Auto. And the missions let you plot your own way of completing them. Hell, very near the beginning of the game, you can even put on a suit that makes you look like Ezio. Not quite like that, but this white outfit which covers your face does remind me a lot of the Italian playboy. But you're not Ezio, you play as Aidan Pierce who welcomes you into the game by flashing up his backstory which involves a little girl in his family losing her teddy bear and her life. There is a lot of driving to and from missions through the city of Los Angeles. Sorry, Los Santos. No, Chicago! But this Chicago doesn't have John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. This Chicago is populated by all sorts of people from all different walks of life. Half of them crazy, half of them are normal, and half of them are bizarre. The flow of the game is thus. Walk to a point on the map. Receive a mission briefing. Go to objective marker on the map. Complete objective. Rinse and repeat. As standard as that might sound, the missions in Assassin's Theft Auto are quite varied and you normally have more than one way you can complete them. This mission, the point is to get the access code from an enemy, then with that code you get into the computer room located on the same construction site. You could run onto the site all guns blazing, you could stealth your way through the site picking off guards as you progress, or you could use hacking techniques to operate the CCTV cameras, steal the code without the guards even knowing and then set off explosions to kill everyone without even stepping foot onto the construction site at all. Personally, I prefer the mix of picking half the guards off with hacking tricks and then running in and going Brock Wild on the last few guards that remain. If you just kill everyone with hacking tricks, then the game soon becomes a press X at the right time to win. And I'll be damned if I'm going to play a fucking quick time event sandbox game. I had to retry a few missions in Grand Theft Creed a couple of times, like this one that says the target has been immobilised, then his mate comes in and runs me over. I had a few missions that took me more than one attempt, particularly on shootout missions where you have to make your way into a restricted area of bad guys. Maybe I'm just getting worse at games these days. <laughs> Yeah, maybe not. But anyway, yeah, the storyline mission's pretty good. I like driving into people, finding people, and shooting people in the face. There are also missions that it's not people you're shooting at. There are loads of side missions that you can do to gain player upgrades. In this one, you have to shoot aliens that are not really there and only appear through AR glasses. There is another AR side mission that I really like, and it's this Super Mario Parkour LSD experience. On the glasses go once again, but this time you're trying to collect all the coins on a route before the timer runs out. It's great fun, and you would have thought this would be totally out of place, but somehow this works for me. So far, I've not really touched on the whole hacking part of Watch Dogs, and considering that the marketing and storyline angle they've gone for, I found it to be one of the weaker parts of the game. When the game says to hack into something, it really means press X. Now, out of my two PS3s, one of them might start like this. But I am by no means any sort of master hacker. But I'm pretty sure that hacking into CCTV or eavesdropping someone else's phone calls is a lot harder than pressing a single button. Even the fucking ion cannon requires you to fill in a few boxes first. The hardest hacking job I've seen is a pipe mania type mini game where it's not what I would call taxing. In fact, it's harder to decide what skills you want to unlock in the Warcraft style talent tree. But the most useless feature in the game goes to cars on demand. Why would I want to faff around on my phone to order a car? I'll show you cars on demand. Oh, that one. 
Right then, well, I could talk about the storyline, but that could be a bit of a spoiler. Overall, so far, this game seems quite good. Maybe not the earth-shattering next-gen title we will promise, but a polished game nonetheless, and worth putting some time into. The thing I'm most proud of, though, is that I went through this whole video without making a watch dodge joke. Wow. Much hacking, so GTA, such greed. For more dodgy kebab videos, click on one of the annotations on the screen now. Or, if you want, join me on social media where I post behind the scenes footage so you can see progress of the videos as they're being made with screenshots. Also, get access to videos that which I don't even post on the dodgy kebab and they're on the sneaky other account.